Have you ever wondered how autocomplete works when you type a message? Well, that's what we're going to create this time around. We're going to look at how to think about the problem, what data structure arises from the reasoning, and what algorithm we can use to insert words and find suggestions. There are many variations of this problem, and what you see in mobile phones can be very sophisticated. What we're going to create here is a simplified version of it, but nevertheless useful. Let's look at the problem. What we want is when we start typing, the algorithm should find possible words beginning with those letters we typed. So for this, let's get a list of words like this. Imagine that these words are known to our autocomplete system. If the user starts typing A, we know that all these words are possible candidates. Depending on the letter, this result set could be large and possibly not useful. When the user types another letter B, the result set narrows down to words beginning with AB. If the next letter is O, that further narrows down the possible candidates to just three words. We can represent this in a slightly different form. We can segment each word by common letters. So all these words starts with AB. We can write that once. Then abandon, ability and able will follow like this. The rest of the words has O in common in addition to the first letters AB. So that can be formatted this way. Now, this is starting to look like a stepped structure. We can draw this in a yet another form. We can easily see this as a tree. Here's a drawing that illustrates this. As you can see, this tree is composed of nodes and each node has two properties. One is the prefix that holds a letter. The other is a list of children. This data structure is called a tri, a name derived from retrieval. So we can represent this with a class called node. And here's how it looks. There's a bunch of functions I will describe in a bit. So this is good. Uh, let's think about how we can add words to this tree. Um, I'm going to use tree and try interchangeably, uh, but I mean the same thing. Let's start with an empty node, and we want to add the simplest case, a word that is A. Let's write a test case for this. Once added to the tree, we can expect it to have its top node prefix set to A, and an empty child, which signifies the end of word. Let's fire up the debugger and see how the add function works. Okay, we are in the add method. First line is a sanity check to see if we passed in a word that is empty or null. If it is, then we return true. Why true? I will get to that in a bit. Now we split the word to the first letter and rest. Um, since this is a new addition and our node object has the prefix set to null, so we set the prefix and call a function called add new child with the rest. Let's look at how add new child function looks like. It creates a new child and calls add on it. Now we are back in add function and the passed in param is empty because previously rest variable was empty. So we return true here and we are back in add new child function and we add the child to the children list and return success. Great. Let's look at adding a longer word. So in this test case, we are adding the word AB to the tree. Um, set a breakpoint and firing up the debugger and stepping in. Uh, so just like before, we are setting the first letter A into the node. stepping into add new child with B as the parameter. Just added B and then adding the terminating empty node now.
Now pay attention here. This explains why we should return true on this line. We have returned from add function with success. And we are returning success from add new child. The stack unwinds and we are returning from add function after the process in B as the letter to add. This brings us back to add new child. And since we are returning success, the node containing B will be added to the children as it should. So the point here is that returning true on the sanity check line ensures that all the nodes up to then will be added to the children list properly. So the test case passes as expected. Now let's take a look at a case where we add a word with common ancestry. We can see that by adding two words about and able to the tree. The tree should have A and B as common ancestors to these two subtrees. Let's inspect the test case. Um, the first two cases are just as we saw previously. Only difference is that now we should have two children at node B. B's first child should be O and should have one child. B's second child should be L and should have one child. And going down that path, the child in turn should have another child E. Now let's take a look how we can retrieve words from the tree. That's done in get words function. The strategy here is that we do depth first traversal, aggregating the prefixes and at a leaf node, we add to the list that we return. So this function returns all the words possible in this subtree. But that's not what we need. What we need is given a prefix or possible matching words. This is done in find function. This is similar to the add function. We are passing in a partial word and break this into first and the rest as before. If the prefix matches the first, we recursively call find on the rest. Uh, let's take a look visually uh, so it is easier to understand. And here are the tests that validate all our assumptions. Here's the test that validates the get words function. We add the words to the tree and get the words and compare to the individual results. And this one tests find function. Here we add three words and input is AB. We expect two results and each of them should match with the first two words. Uh, and this one tests find again, but this time the input is ACC. We expect one result, which is the third word starting with AC. The last test is a gradual test. We have three words added to the tree. Uh, first input is A, and we expect to match with all three words. Second input is AB, and we expect to match with two words corresponding to the first two words. The third input is ABO, and we expect one result, which is the first word. So this simulates a user typing a letter at a time and the results it would produce. Let's run all these tests.
Excellent. The all pass, as you saw, autocomplete can easily be implemented like this. Uh, also, it can be extended in many ways to optimize the results. For example, you can make it learn gradually while it is being used by adding the words it fails to autocomplete. It can also be improved by adding a probability component. For example, we track what previous words were typed and select a probable word from the result set from the tree. This is called a Markov chain. If you are interested in these subjects, please leave a comment and I could make a related video. So that's it for this video. Like always, if you like what I create, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Until next time.